the worst horror dirt story from an airplane? Well, it's funny you mention the guy with the toenails, but uh, the most disgusting thing I see is people, even the fancy guys that wear you know, shoes with no socks, you get on a plane on a long flight, they take their shoes off. And where do they go? They go to the bathroom. And Are they stupid? They don't realize they're stepping in bacteria with their feet? Did you ever go into the bathroom with your shoes oh, on? Oh, please stop. It's a family show. I wear galoshes myself. I, I know. It's disgusting. And you see these fancy guys, these Palm Beach guys, going in barefoot to take their shoes off. Oh, the style, the no sock style. Yeah, yeah, the loafer style. It's unbelievable. I, it's, like you say, I see it. I can't believe it. And I, like you say, it's like gross. Just gross. You don't know what to do. I throw my shoes out when I get off a, a plane. I get them, I throw the shoes in the garbage. No, you got it. You got to take your life in your hand today, wherever you go. It's not just an uh, airplane, but when the story comes out on the amount of dirt they're finding, fecal matter on the on the on the tray table, unwashed blankets and pillows. But I look, I haven't accepted a pillow or a blanket on a plane unless they're sanitized for years. I mean, who would, right? I know the bacteria on it is just unbelievable. And don't ever drink the water on a plane. They never clean the tanks out. That's the one thing. Oh, now, are you in the airline business? Well, I'm associated with it, so I can tell you horror stories, but just don't drink. So you're, in other words, you're a hijacker. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I wouldn't. Well, what, what water on a plane? Where? From where? Where do they get the water? They don't, no, I was just on a plane. They have water in a bottle. It's, uh, it's not from a tank. They're, they're bringing bottles of water on now. I don't think they serve you from a tank, do they? The coffee. Where do they make the coffee? Where oh, the- you're right. The coffee water. Oh, my God. Well, no wonder I stick to booze. I mean, uh, vodka's got, it, got its, uh, its pluses. Believe me, one of them is there's no bacteria in it. I got news for you. I know a lot of students, they take actually the vodka and they wash their hands with it. It's uses a disinfectant when they're on the What a waste. What a waste. My God, that's disgusting. I No, I was on a plane recently, and they have a high, uh, high-grade vodka now they give out as, a, as, a, you know, like, as, your, as your general vodka. All right, I'm giving you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. We got news, views, reviews coming up. Latest news, you know what it is. Sarnoff, uh, death sentence, big deal. Found guilty. You know he's not going to. You know, till the lawyers from Harvard get through with him, he'll be there 30 years, you'll see him with gray hair. Sarnoff sentenced to death at Boston Marathon bombing. Okay, big deal. Big deal. This kid, I guarantee you, you'll see him with gray hair in the jail cell, reading the Quran, telling you to drop dead 30 years from now. After the uh, the lawyers from Harvard get through defending him, yeah, Allahu Akbar to you, Sarnov. Why don't they give him the? Uh, no, I can't say it. It's a family show. You know he's going to live very well in prison. He's going to get six ethnic meals a day, prayer rug, uh, visits from an imam from the local mosque. Yeah, F- flashback. The mother said Americans can burn in hell. What a mother he had. Father moans, hangs up on phone interview upon learning fate. What a parent! What a set of parents this kid had. Zokar Zonov sentenced to death for marathon bombing. What'd you expect? Well, in Boston, I'm surprised they didn't offer him a job at the uh, at Harvard University in the poli sci department or in the ethnic studies department. I mean, actually, this is a good thing. The way the world is today, especially in in liberal Boston, they could have offered him a tenure job somewhere, maybe working for uh, one of the left wing groups. Zonov's face. Uh, He'll be around thirty, forty years. I guarantee you. The twelve-member jury had to be unanimous for Tsarnov to get the death penalties. Tsarnov's father, Anzor Tsarnov, reached by phone by the AP in the Russian region of Dagestan, let out a deep moan upon hearing the news and hung up. Three people were killed and more than two sixty wounded when the two pressure cooker bombs. Pressure cooker bombs. My mother used to cook with a pressure cooker. To this day, I I got to remember now. It's like remembrances of things past. Instead of the petite Madeleine, I remember the pressure cooker. I mean, if you, re- you know what I'm saying, it's a literary reference, went over 99.9% of the people's heads, but those who got it are laughing right now. They have to hold their guts. When I saw the word pressure cooker in this story, this was very much like Proust's Petite Madeleines, which bring back a whole slew of memories, right? If you know a literary reference. So for me, Savage, the pressure cooker is like the Petite Madeleine to Proust. And the pressure cooker to me, when my mother would make a beef stew in a pressure cooker in that kitchen in the Bronx, I usually went to another room. I expected an explosion any minute. She wasn't a terrorist. She was making my father a beef stew in a pressure cooker. I used to watch the meter on the top of that thing. I was always afraid it was going like, to explode any second. Do they still sell a pressure cooker? I never understood. The, I used to ask her, what's a pressure cooker? What is that about? There's gas underneath the pot. There's a top. 
and you and the air comes out and the pressure goes in, and the pressure adds to the, it cooks faster. Great. Meanwhile, you put your entire family at risk. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. My time is speeding by an hour and a half for radio. I feel like I'm in here five minutes. So look, any topic today, it doesn't have to be what I brought up. It could be anything, not just pressure cookers and Sonov. Uh, there could be the book, the this, the that, 855-407-282. I, I was right. I told you you'll see him as a gray-haired man cursing America for 30 years because of the vermin in the, in the legal profession who are against the death penalty. They're for abortion. They believe in euthanasia, but not for vermin like this. You hear this? Can anyone explain liberalism to me in a rational manner? And I mean doctrinaire liberalism, not nice people who are good people who just want good for others. I'm talking about doctrinaire psychotics who believe in abortion and euthanasia, but will work around the clock to keep a vermin like this, Sonov, from getting a death, the death penalty. Few federal inmates on death row have been actually put to death. That's all. Oh, yeah, I'm, gr I'm glad he got the death penalty. He'll be alive 30, 40 years, you'll see. A gray-haired man like, like Lecter. And with the Quran there and the cage with, a, uh, with an imam coming every three days and special meals. So how many were killed quickly? Timothy McVeigh. They knocked him off right away Why he had secrets. Timothy McVeigh's dead. Oklahoma City bombing. How come the uh, Harvard didn't keep him alive? Because he knew too much in plain English. The same reason Saddam Hussein was killed immediately. The same re reason that Muhammad Gaddafi was killed immediately. They knew too much. You get it? Zarnoff doesn't know anything. He'll be alive for 50 years. That's so. He might be president one day. In this Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, whatever. Does anyone like this stuff? Or am, I the, am I the only one left who, who like likes this music? What was the other one I picked, Robert, that I said before the break play on Rock and Roll Friday? Incidentally, we're open for business here. Uh, not just airline filled horror stories or uh, George uh, Staphylococcus, whatever you want to talk about. You're going to hear George Staphylococcus before, before it leaves my breath already. It's on someone's blog. Oh, he gave a, an apology. Let's, while you're looking for the other song, play clip one. Go ahead. Let's, here's George uh, Staphylococcus apologizing today. Now I want to address some news you may have seen about me. Over the last several years, I've made substantial donations to dozens of charities, including the Clinton Global Foundation. Those donations were a matter of public record, but I should have made additional disclosures on air when we covered the foundation. And I now believe that directing personal donations to that foundation was a mistake. Turn the Even pretty boy off. All right, turn the pretty boy off. Can anyone play a horn like this anymore? Well, their brains are so warped from racism thinking about racism, avoiding racism, planning racism, trying to avoid racism, thinking about how racist everyone is in the audience, that no one can play a horn anymore. You hear that? How he, wait, stop. Did you hear what that man just did with that saxophone? I guess if you're a musician, you understand what he was doing. Backstopping it, forward stopping it. Only a musician could understand what I'm saying to you. I do the same thing in talk radio that he did with that saxophone. Incidentally, which is I'm very musical. My voice is very musical. And I am very musical today because I'm flying on a, a triple espresso with a sliver of, of lemon in it. And uh, my allergies have abated because I finally, I finally broke down and took an allergy pill. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I don't know why it's working so well. I feel good. It has a slight antidepressive quality to it. It could be because it's the first time I've been able to breathe in 15 years. I actually know what it's like to breathe through two nostrils in the year 2015, the first time in 15 years that I can actually breathe. No wonder I feel happy. I was gagging for air. I had no idea I was gagging. All right, welcome back to the program. It's really amazing, uh, modern medicine. Finally caught up with it. Uh, I, I don't offer any other solution. I've tried quercetin, vitamin C, bioflavonoids, hyoflavonoids, myoflavonoids, euroflavonoids, his flavonoid, my flavonoid, your flavonoid. And I had to go to a medical pill in order to get relief, <laughs> frankly. So I'm a hybrid in that regard. I believe in uh, Western medicine combined with alternative medicine, combined with homeopathy, combined with herbal medicine, combined with the three V's, which is, uh, frankly, it works every time. The three V's work better than anything, which is uh, 
vitamins, vodka, and vitriol. I may package it one day as Dr. Savage's 3V formula. I, I don't know how to combine the vitamins yet with the vodka, but I'm working on that. I, I don't know if I could put vitriol in a pill. I'm working on that part. I, I can combine vitamins and vodka in a, in a, in a uh, liquid solution, but I don't know how to put vitriol in it unless I use... Unless I put uh, uh, Barack Obama or Al Sharpton's voice in a capsule, then I could combine some vitriol. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, look at this. Mike on WLYV Radio in Indiana is calling you. Mike, what's on your mind, Mike? Hey, Michael, I really enjoyed the book. Um, I'm about in Chapter 5 by now, and I love the character Saul. And I just, the book just reminds me of that TV show 24. I just can't stop. Wait, wait, this is interesting. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, so it's a great compliment because the TV show 24 was great in its early days. Countdown to Mecca is what he's talking about, my new novel. And the TV show 24 was good in the beginning when they were able to target Islamists as the enemy, right? Then they, they modified it and killed the show, right? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Everybody got uh, caponized along the way by the powers that be. And they weren't even allowed to call a terrorist a terrorist like our president. Well, I'm glad that you liked it. And I did love 24 in the early days. It was fantastic. And I do like the new character, Saul Minsky. He seems to be a big hit, Saul. I may have to do something with Saul Minsky rather than Jack Hatfield. Everyone seems to like him better than anybody. Did you like the, uh, the clown in the book? Yeah, it's just a great book. I love it. What do, you think about the what do you think about the Russian hooker, Anastasia? Oh, she's good, too. She kind of reminds me of the uh, character from 24, um, was it Nina? Wow. I, I don't remember Nina, but my line about her where she had the eyes of an Arctic wolf, I think that's original to literature. Is it good? That's a good line. Plant in the uh, at CPU. Yeah, but I like the. I, no, I'm talking about how I wrote about her. I said she had the eyes of an Arctic wolf. I think that's fantastic, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just my books. Of course, I'm going to like it. All right. Thanks, my friend. KBET Radio, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. Peter, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, a positive book report. My local Barnes & Noble, I strolled in on Monday, and they had 10 of your books there. And then I just went in yesterday, they were down to two. and they're so, where? so I have eight fans in Las Vegas, <laughs> that was good to know. Uh, they actually had them on the front table, the entry table. It wasn't the most prominent thing, uh, uh, book, but it was like listed with the new arrivals. Right, right, that's where BNN is putting them, on the round table with the new arrivals. That's where they're going. I hope that uh, uh, the two moguls there in the city get a copy. Uh, I hope Steve Wynn reads Countdown to Mecca, and I hope that Saul, M M Mr. Adelson gets a copy. I must admit I was somewhat surprised because their uh, curator there had the uh, purple and pink hair and the lip gear and the eyebrow pins and stuff. But that, she was very pleasant and said, well, it looks like it's selling, so we should be ordering up some more. And I have a couple comments. No, a lot of the freaks are very nice, actually. I, I found a lot of freaks to be very nice underneath all of the exterior uh, accoutrements, the, 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 the eyebrow thing and the, the hair. The, underneath, it's a human being who wants to get through life. That's their, that's their costume, you know what I'm saying? And then a couple comments on positive on B.B. King, and that was, one of the quirks that he had was whenever he would sing and vocalize, he would stop strumming his guitar. But when he'd strum his guitar, he wouldn't sing. And some more competitive uh, artists said, well, that's a detriment. You know, I can't. No, I actually saw him a couple times. I'm 60 and grew up in the 60s, the hate era, hate Ashbury era, and all the shows in San Francisco at Phil Graham's. Uh, oh, you come from the old days of the, uh, of the underarm hair and patchouli oil. Oh, yeah, and I, in fact, one of my high school chums was Neil Sean from Journey. But uh, aside that, I saw B.B. King a couple of times. No, he, he's one of my heroes for a couple of reasons. Great voice, his story growing up as a sharecropper son, no government aid, became a great musician without it, uh, didn't think that white people were out to get him. You know the whole story, Peter, but his, mu his music is what drew me to him. Way before this whole racism crap was thrown in our faces by Obama, I was a fan of many, many musicians, including B.B. King. Thank now, you for the call. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, and I brought you into a land of fruitful fields to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. Read your Jeremiah. You'll see why God is pissed off at man. Or as once we turned away from the church and from God, 
God abandoned us and he said, you don't like me? I'm not good enough for you? You don't like what I've given you? You don't like the 